Let's break down all the seven essential fat loss habits for success that we go over at Heartletics for our members into one inclusive episode to just recap everything and give you guys just all the support needed to speed up your metabolism, uh, burn more body fat effectively, put on more muscle, whatever the case may be. Um, trust me, if you just stick with these seven habits that we're going to go over right here, you will have success. You will have a life where you have tons of energy. Uh, you're going to be more fulfilled in terms of, you know, physically being fit. And then on top of that, you know, you're not going to have all these underlying health concerns. Maybe the risk of high blood pressure, maybe the risk of high cholesterol levels, uh, obesity, anything like that. You know, focusing on your body is one aspect of all of this. You know, at Heartletics, we go over the four pillars of success. Your physical, but also your mental, emotional, and spiritual. And we'll get into that here in a little bit um, later in some of the other episodes. But let's just recap all of the fat loss habits for success, okay? Uh, for starters, why does this matter? Well, for one, the habits that we're about to go over, this isn't your cookie cutter, like, you know, one size fits all, so to speak. Like, oh, hey, just cut out your carbs and do keto. Well, okay. That might work good for somebody for a few short weeks, but then when life hits them with some curveballs, and that's typically the case, stress, adversity, they fall off the wagon. They go back to their old ways. But not only that, think about it. There's no knowledge, right? There's no education. There's just, hey, cut out your carbs, you know? They're not educating you in the fact that, hey, you're just losing water weight. They don't actually teach you the difference between fat loss and weight loss. You know, and it's something that you have to fit into your own lifestyle, your own routine, your own schedule. Heartletics is different. We try to just give our members the knowledge, um, you know, give them the coaching, give them the education to be almost like their own nutritionists, be almost like their own personal trainers, right? Be like their own coaches where they have acquired all the knowledge on how to apply this to best suit in with their lifestyle, where it's it's like brushing their teeth. It's like a habit, you know? Um, in the beginning for anybody, it's always like, you know, uh, kind of like driving a car, so to speak. I think that would be the best way to describe Heartletics, where in the very beginning, somebody gets signed up and, you know, they got their meal plans, they got their workouts, they're getting used to the app and the community group, everything like that. And think about that, like you being in driver's, you know, driver ed school where you're learning the different functions, you're learning about the signs of like, you know, green light, red light, yellow, um, stop signs, all this stuff. And then eventually you go to, you know, your in-person driving classes where, you know, you have your driving instructor right there next to you. You know, you're still kind of timid. You're still kind of nervous a little bit. Um, and it's not like day one with that instructor, you're off on the freeway, you know, no. It's like you go to a, you know, at least I had to go to, you know, an abandoned parking lot and learn the maneuverability, learn you know the features, the functions of how the vehicle works, everything like that. And then eventually, right, you're on the side streets, you're on the suburbs, and then you know when the time is right, you're you're on the freeway, you know, and you're still kind of nervous a little bit, but you know, think about it, you know, now 20, 30 years, and you don't have a driving instructor anymore, you can probably drive on that freeway uh, pretty easy now without feeling so scared and, and nervous like how you first were. You could probably drive on that freeway, right, and text, or listen to the radio, um, not be two at ten like what they recommend and always say, and um, you know maybe be in, into you know daydreaming on that whole entire commute to work or wherever it is that you're going, and you get there perfectly fine, right? It's part of your routine. It's part of your habit. That's what we make these fat loss habits with the physical aspect for Heartletics is helping our members, right, formulate this where it's something sustainable for anybody's lifestyle because we're teaching them how to make specific tweaks for their schedule, for their body type, everything like that, giving them the education. So here's the seven essential fat loss habits for success. Just a quick recap. And if you apply all these, I promise you this, you will help speed up your metabolism. Remember, uh, your metabolic rate, your metabolism is really comprised of a bunch of different you know, aspects. But really your, your BMR, um, your basal metabolic rates or your RMR, your resting metabolic rate, this is like the main bulk of you know, how your metabolism you know, uh, is functioning, so to speak, and effective. You know, and a lot of this has to go into play with your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure. 
right? And once again, the big bulk of that is your BMR. And then you have things on there like, you know, um, the thermic effect of food, um, NEATS, which is a huge aspect of that, right? Your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and then your exercise activity thermogenesis. You know, all of this has a big aspect into just helping somebody uh, be more efficient when it comes to metabolizing calories that they consume and utilizing them for energy as opposed to just storing them as body fats. So here are the seven habits, quick little rundown. Number one, calories. You have to know your specific calories. And if you guys remember, I, I, I like to use a, a cup, a glass as a great analogy, you know, where at the end of the day, if you're not putting any liquids, right, any calories into your cup, you're gonna be in what's called um, metabolic you know, stress and, you know, um, harm to your body where you're malnourished. You know, think about it. If you're not eating anything, no macronutrients, no micronutrients, there is no energy going into your cup, you know, you're basically riding around on fumes. And, you know, just like a, a car, if you're not treating it properly, proper maintenance, filling it up, it will eventually break down. Same thing with your body. And, you know, as you're losing quote unquote weight, that could be your loss of your muscle, which will slow down your metabolism. So, you want to under eat because that's horrible. And you don't want to overeat as well. If you pour way too many liquids into the cup, it eventually is going to spill over. Well, hey, if you're consuming way too many calories than needed and you're way over into a calorie surplus, yes, you know, you will be storing body fat. So you want to make sure you're staying within this range. And within this range of the cup, if you take any glass and put your finger right in the middle of that, let's just say that's your maintenance. And there's obviously plus or minus of some calories, right? Maybe 200, 300, 500, just depending on your body type, um, where you can have X amount of calories and not gain weight nor lose weights. Now, if you want to lose weights, right, you want to be underneath that maintenance line. You want to be underneath the middle, but not way so much so where there's no calories or liquids going into the cup. You know, so you want to be in that healthy deficit range. And that could be anywhere from, you know, 100 to uh, 500 calories below your maintenance line. And then above that, right, is what's called your surplus, where, hey, you can have, you know, more calories, right, more liquids going into the cup, that's above the middle of the cup, right? Above the maintenance where you could be putting on muscle. Like, you know, you can also be speeding up your metabolism that route, putting on some good solid, you know, mass, but not body fat because it's still not spilling over the cup, so to speak. So remember, everybody's body type is different. And when you figure it out, you know, what works best for you when it comes to calories, um, it's going to help you on the long run because this is the main, you know, th you know, thermogenesis here, right? This is what the a big, you know, fat loss and, and gaining fat has a lot to do with calories, okay? Um, and we always like to say it's not just don't think about it just calories in versus calories out. Think about it more like energy in versus energy out. Sometimes you're utilizing more calories, more energy to expend, right? Um, more, you know, resistance in the weights. Uh, more energy for you know you know your needs whatever the case may be you know so having a healthy understanding of calories is really going to help you set up for success when it comes to the rest of these fat loss habits. Now, the second fat loss habit that we go over is macronutrients. Okay, that's or that's your your proteins, your carbs, your fats. And at the end of the day, we always say you know carbs and fats. Don't worry about them too much. If you're a type two diabetic, something a little bit different here. I would be more mindful of carbs and really looking into the glycemic index just so you know how to not spike your insulin. But if you're having any higher, you know, spiked insulin carbs, you know, guess what? Like mix that with a healthy fat, it's gonna slow down the digestion. Because that's all that carbs are and that's all that fats are, are just two different energy sources. You know, fats are slow digesting, carbs are fast digesting. And long story short, if you're not a type two diabetic, don't even worry about those. Focus on your protein. In fact, everybody should be focusing on their protein. You know, uh, the bare minimum of protein you should be having is about, you know, 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. And I would say the, the max threshold is 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. Play it safe, though. At least one gram of protein per pound of body weight, you will, you know, help your body burn more body fat, speed up your metabolism. Um, it's higher up on the thermic effect of food. So there's a lot of great principles to just, you know, helping with your metabolic rates, but at the same time, it's gonna feel, make you feel fuller longer, right? It's gonna be more satiating. So it's a great aspect, focus on more protein, keep it simple. Uh, the third fat loss habit is your strength training. You know, this could be either at the gym or this could be at home with or without equipment. 
It's completely up to you. What we always recommend our members is to focus on a routine that best suits their schedule first and foremost. Focus on workouts that they actually enjoy doing. And lastly, focus on progressive overload, right? Don't just stick with the same weights, the same workouts. You always wanna be changing things up and mixing things up to you know, uh, really enhance that you know, um, mind-muscle connection with you know, training the body differently, so to speak, to where it's not hitting those stalls, okay? Uh, the fourth fat loss habit, uh, this is typically everyone's favorite, is NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This could be simple things just like improving on your daily steps. Um, this could be just like, you know, yes, I would consider push-ups and sit-ups in there, um, but it's mainly just fidgeting, moving around, right? Getting your body moving, different aspects like that. You know, if we give somebody a consistency habit of push-ups or sit-ups, you know, yes, they're considered, you know, working out exercises, but at the same time, it's just, we're getting them out of that routine instead of them being so sedentary. They're getting up, they're moving, right? Doing some push-ups, getting right back down into the chair for work, whatever the case may be, right? It's those little things that really add up. And that's what NEAT is, right? Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, where you're not quote unquote getting a workout in, but it's just these small little things where you're moving the body more and there's a great you know, aspect to how that applies to speeding up somebody's metabolism. I feel like nowadays, everybody's so sedentary. So if we learn how to just like have the knowledge on properly eating and, and move and be a little bit more active, everybody can be uh, more successful in their weight loss journey. Um, so that way, you know, think about it. We're not dealing with you know this obesity crisis out there. Um, the fifth fat loss habit is hydration. You know, we recommend that guys drink around a gallon of water a day and females drink around, you know, three fourths a gallon of water a day. You know, hydration is great. Your, your muscles need it uh, to burn body fat effectively. You need it. It helps out with energy levels, helps out with just also, you know, kidney functions with filtering out, you know, different kind of processes of like toxins, waste. Um, you know, think about it. if you ever had like, you know, a, a long night, right, and had way too many um, alcoholic beverages, you know, drinking some water is really going to help flush everything out. Uh, but at the same time, you know, your brain needs water, your muscles need water, your, you know, there's your organs need water. Being fully hydrated with, especially with your body being over 60% water anyways, is going to help you out with just being more optimized for overall health functions. The sixth and seventh fat loss habit, these are like the two hidden ones that um, just like how, you know, if we're looking at the, the TDEE, right, uh, the total daily energy expenditure list with your BMR, your basal metabolic rate being the bulk of your metabolism and your EAT, your exercise activity thermogenesis being like the very tip of the spear, right, the very tip of the pyramid. Remember, uh, what's going to help speed up your metabolism is like strength training and the needs, right? And that's at the very top of your TDEE list. But that's going to help out in the long run with your BMR, your basal metabolic rate. So even though it's at the top, it helps out with the big bulk of somebody's metabolic rates. Well, think about that with like these last two fat loss habits. You know, the stress and the sleep are so important. You know, I always say it like this. Somebody could be in the gym, you know, lifting weights and feeling good, um, sticking their routine. Somebody could be eating, you know, plenty of protein, sticking with their macros and their nutritional goals, sticking within their calories, applying the 80-20 rule so they have that sense of balance and flexibility and, uh, you know, getting their steps in, uh, drinking plenty of water. But if they are highly stressed and their cortisol levels are spiked, right, because stress management is our sixth fat loss habit that we go over, if they're underneath a lot of stress, they're not gonna see the results that they want. If they're also, let's say, sleep deprived and not sleeping enough, which is our seventh fat loss habit for success, the sleep and the recovery, they're not gonna see the results they're looking for. They're not gonna get the body that they truly want. So stress, right? And like how cortisol plays effect. And we say like this, for most individuals, they just need to know the importance, the awareness, right? Like, hey, just like how if someone's going to tell you metabol excuse me, your metabolism could be easily sped up by just having more protein, it's like, okay, you're aware of that. And maybe you've looked into some studies, you've seen that, now you're making it more conscious effort to eat more protein into your diet. Well, think about it. Maybe you just need to be a little bit more aware of stress and having high amounts of cortisol, how that affects the body negatively. But also when you're sleep deprived, you know, how uh, your likelihood for obesity goes up and stroke and heart disease and even type 2 diabetes right by like 25 percent and then other aspects where you know let's say if you're not getting enough sleep um, you're going to make it very very hard to lose body fats and in fact studies have shown that you can actually lose your muscle 
So what is going to help speed up your metabolism is obviously your muscle. And if you're not getting enough sleep, you're going to be losing everything that you're working so hard for. So these are the seven essential fat loss habits that we go over at Heartletics. And I promise you this, if you just apply these into your lifestyle, you will have success. Uh, I think the most reason why guys typically out there fail uh, is because two reasons. One, they want to kind of shortcut the way and, and not do what's sustainable. They just want to see overnight success. And maybe that's just, you know, not eating anything, tons of cardio, you know, cut out the carbs, different aspects of that where they want to see the quick wins. But those aren't long-term success wins. You know, it's not going to be sustainable in the long run that best suits somebody's lifestyle. And the second reason is because they don't have somebody in their corner, right? You know, holding them accountable, supporting them, helping them. And that's why we always say that, you know, at Heartletics, um, it's not just you doing this by yourself. It's coaches helping you. It's a community of other members helping you every step of the way. And that has a big aspect to having success. So if you just apply these seven essential fat loss habits to your own life and realize here consistency is key um, find some other members or people out there to help hold you accountable and stick with it long term always remember your why as to why you're doing this and why you want to you know be healthier and always keep your goals in the back of your head you will have success i promise you that